to this, the ninth episode of our beginner tutorial series. In this episode we will be talking about level traveling or map transitions. So since we're going to be traveling between levels, let's start off with making a few levels. We'll uh, take an existing level, for me in this case, I'll just take uh, this one and I'll duplicate, duplicate it and I'll call it uh, tutorial 91 map and then I'll duplicate it again and I'll create a tutorial 92 map. This way I have two different maps that are looking identical. Let's open up the first one and we'll say this text on the floor, we'll rename it so we we'll see which level we're on. We'll call this the 9 underscore 1 map. And let's save that and go into the second map. Do something similar for this one. We'll rename it into 9 underscore 2 map, like so. Then in addition to that, just to make things uh, well and tidy, we'll go to Blueprints and we'll create an enum like we learned in the last episode. And we'll call this one E underscore levels. We open that one up. We make two instances for this one. And we'll go and get the names of our maps that we just created. So we'll take the first one, create that one as a post. Take the second one, it just has a 2 in it, and let's just make sure, yeah, seems like I named them like so. Okay, so now we have enumerators for, for these different maps, which makes it nice in case we want to travel to different maps and uh, not risk uh, typing the wrong thing. So if we were to make a teleporter now, let's go to the first map again. And then we go to our blueprints folder and we right click and we create a blueprint class of type actor. Call it bp underscore teleporter. And inside this teleporter we'll put in a static mesh for visual representation. And we take our usual cube because that's very handy. We scale down so we have a little bit of a platform to stand on. We add a box collision because we want to have a sort of a volume to react to uh, us entering this teleporter. And we'll scale it up a little bit. And in height, we'll move it up a little bit as well. And then we can rename this one to Proximity Volume. spelled proximity volume. There we go. Okay. Uh, we'll create an event for on component begin overlap for the volume. And we'll say that if the other actor is casted to first person character, then we know that it's a player entering and then we want to teleport this character to a different level. So what we'll do is we will right click and type open level by name. It will take a certain name in here and we can for this purpose do so that we say this particular teleporter should always go to whatever its variable is set to. So we set a destination level on this teleporter. And the destination level is supposed to be of E underscore level type. So the enum we just created. So when you compile this and see, you can see that we only have the levels available that we've put here. So if we're supposed to use this in one, we can leave it as default uh, level one here. But we also want to make sure that uh, the variable is instance editable so that we can change it when it's out in the level. This is for the reason of if we put a teleporter out in the world like this. Also, let's make it a bit clearer. The static mesh was a bit grey against the background, so let's change the material to gold. Because everybody knows that the teleporter with gold functions at least 50% better than a normal one. And there we go, we can see it more clearly. 
So now that we have this teleporter marked in the world there, we can see that its destination level is going to be the Tutorial 9.1 map. So that's not very useful if we're on Tutorial 9.2 map, of course, but then we can change it to 2 here, and equally if we were to drag it out in a different level, we can just alter the destination by having this convenient drop-down. So let's see how this works then. We're running around on 9.1 map, and we go into the teleporter, and we get an error. Okay. Let's troubleshoot. I do seem to recall that we didn't actually hook something into the teleporter. We stopped just short of... yeah, okay. So it was trying to enter the level none, which is not very good because we don't have a level none, of course. Um, so we're going to use the destination level. And we're going to... let's see if we can get this to string first. So we want the friendly name of the enumerator that gives us the text instead of the number. And then from string to text should be an easy conversion for it. So let's try it again. And get teleported to the 9.2 map here. And if we were equally to go to the 9.2 map, we can make an endless loop by putting in a teleporter in this map and saying that this teleporter should go to the 9.1 map. And we could start on the 9.2 map for this, since we now have a rotation between these two, so we can keep going between them until we're fed up with going between them. So that is how you can uh, traverse levels of maps in Unreal Engine. All you need is an open level command like this. Uh, you don't have to trigger it from a teleporter or anything like that. You can trigger it in any way you want. It could be something like the server determining when you need to move or the game mode or game uh, state determining that something has happened and that in itself changes some kind of event which will in turn lead to you loading into a new level something like checking that you have fulfilled all the objectives or maybe if you have died or something of that nature there are different ways also of traversing between maps um, we will not get into those today but just to be aware that this is not the only way and there's uh, several ways of doing it with this way as well one note before we end, um, in earlier tutorials we discussed about how convenient it is to rename a blueprint class because it will find all the references of it and rename it as well. This is not something that is true when it comes to enumerations like we used for level transitioning. It is a string that it keeps track of, a, a series of characters. So if you were to change the name of a level, for example, the string in the enumerator doesn't know that it's belonging to that particular string or name. So by changing that, you will break the connection between the enumeration. So make sure that you keep track of changes that are related to enumerators. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you did not like it, leave a dislike. Leave any suggestions or comments you have down below. Subscribe and share this video if you want to see more like it in the future. In the next video, we will be talking about persistence. That is all for now. Keep on learning. Take care.